Oh, hello. So, I think I'm going to be doing an impromptu 48 hour readathon with myself. There's like, this isn't a thing. This is just a Mara thing. Because I really need to rest this weekend. And so I cleared my calendar, but it occurred to me that the last couple of times I've like really tried to take a weekend to like truly rest. I end up just sort of like watching TikToks or playing Candy Crush which are lovely things that I enjoy, but it's not ultimately that restful to me. And something about like having a reading project, I think gives me enough stimulation that I feel rested, but not so much, like I'm still, you know, just hanging. So I don't know, we're, this, we're gonna try this. I just thought this might be a, a way to try to focus my resting energy. Also, I don't know if you can hear Marple. She's like, you are standing. That means that you should be petting me. Okay, so in terms of, so my goal is to read between four and five books this weekend. I pulled this stack. Of these, there's only two that I definitely need to get through. Um, I, or well, really only one, Blood Air by Alona Andrews. I want to read this for the second season of my podcast. So I want to read and annotate this. So this definitely is gonna happen. She's doing a thing where she jumps for pets. God, you're so cute. Let's see if we can make it. Yeah, hi. You need pets, baby. Yeah. Oh, you're such a sweet girl. Yeah. Distracted by a kitty. Um, okay, so this is the only thing that I like legit need to read just to stay on overall life planning track. So this is on the TBR. This is one that I'm pretty sure I'm also gonna read. Like I'm gonna start with this, which is a part of a different vlog I'm working on. So I probably won't talk a lot about this, but it's short. I think this would be a good way to kind of get in the mood. So Ladies Guide to Celestial Mechanics, historical female, female romance. The rest of this is just though up to me. So maybe Legends and Lattes, cause I've heard this is super cozy. So I, could, I think this could be like a very restful kind of read. It's described as cozy fantasy. So also it's very polarizing and I kind of want to find out what my opinion about it is. Then I feel like I should pop my tea Kingfisher cherry with either the Hollow Places or Nettle and Bone. This one's been on my TBR longer. This one's newer, so a little like fresher. I don't know, but one of these I feel like would be a good a good option. I'm in progress on Life's Work by Willie Parker. This is not necessarily restful, but it's pretty short, so I think I could polish this off and I would feel good finally, finally just finishing it. I don't know, I keep getting depressed when I'm reading it, but I'm wondering if I like mix it in with a bunch of other things, if it will sort of let, let me read it without being too depressed. Uh, and then I pulled Daisy Darker as a possible mystery pick because I'm really excited to read this one. It's an isolation thriller, a bunch of people on an island, somebody dies, my literal favorite trope. So I feel like I've pulled a lot of fun things with the exception of this, but edifying. And let's see, I mean, I'm hoping I can get through at least four books. I think that's definitely doable, uh, but maybe even five, we'll see.
Okay, checking in. Today has had highs and lows, so um, I did get through oop, the Ladies Guide to Celestial Mechanics, which was super fucking cute, which I kind of knew it would be. It's very nerdy. It has more science in it than I thought it might, but it's also a very like, I don't know, sweet is kind of the word I want to use romance, not because it's not sexy, but just because like, I don't know, the dynamic between what's their faces, Lucy and Catherine, yeah. Um, it's just like real pure. So this was really good. So I read this, I took a break for lunch, and I had a salad, which I knew better. <sighs> I don't do well with raw veggies anymore, but it's the summer and it's hot and I love a salad and I keep eating them and they keep making me sick. And so it made me sick, like I knew it would. <sighs> you know, sometimes, you just keep doing things that you know are not a good idea, but you do them anyway. <sighs> I went two years without a salad. I can't help it. I'm enjoying being rebellious by eating them. Uh, so I did that. I eat that. I got sick and then needed to take a nap. So that kind of derailed me. I had some good kitty snuggles and I have made some good progress on blood air. I am halfway through. So far, my feelings about this mixed because it it is still like the Alona Andrews thing and the Alona Andrews thing I really, really like. It just works for me. We got like a highly competent female lead who is m highly magic-y and is solving a mystery. And then there's like a slow burn romance. We haven't even gotten to the romance bit, really. But it's all stuff I love. This is arguably a shoot off of my favorite series of all time. I'm gonna have to think about that. I don't know if I would actually consider like rereading this and thinking about Kate Daniels in the context of, of reading this. It's making me think that maybe Kate Daniels isn't actually my favorite series anymore. It's a hard thing for me to say. No, that's, that's a different set of thoughts, but anyway. So I am enjoying this, but it really does feel like Julie, who now goes by Aurelia, is She's Kate. Like, she's too much like Kate, I think, except that she's embracing her blood magic. And I just, I don't feel like there's enough separating her from Nevada, Kate, and then, oh, what's her face? Who's the lead of the clean sweep? Well, I would say that heroine is a little bit, a little bit different, but Julie is really reading a lot like Nevada and Kate. And I just, I don't know. I, it's still good, but I feel like, that's a critique of so much sameness, sameness between our main characters. So I don't know. Anyway, so now I'm trying to decide if I'm going to finish this tonight or I think I could either finish the second half of this book tonight reading, you know, is, as you could see, I was tabbing the hell out of this. So I'm reading fairly closely. I could either do that or I could probably finish this entire book. Tonight, I think I have some good momentum on blood air, so I may go ahead and continue with that. And if that's the case, let's think about tomorrow. So I think tomorrow could be a three book day because I made some decisions. So one, I'm not gonna read life's work. I'm too tired and not feeling well. And I just, I want more like focus when I get to that. So I'm not gonna read that. I also swapped in the island instead of Daisy Darker because this is a YA isolated close circle mystery. So it'll be lighter. And I think I'm just in the mood for lighter. So I put up a poll asking you guys which tea Kingfisher I should go with. Right now, Nettle and Bone is winning, but we'll see in the morning what wins. Assuming that wins, assuming I finish Blood Air tonight, tomorrow I am gonna try to make it a three book day because this is like 240-ish pages, something like that. So this will take me, I'm assuming a 60 page reading rate per hour. This will take me about four hours to finish. However, I am guessing that both of these could be 80 to 100 page an hour reads for me, which means I could get through this in about three hours possibly. And I could get through this in, let's see how long, possibly also about three hours. So that would, this would be 10 hours worth of reading, which is entirely possible because really the only thing I have to do tomorrow is a few chores. I have cleared the deck this weekend. So assuming yeah, that that's kind of what I'm thinking might be the plan. If that happens, that'd be like an 800 page day, which would be pretty good for me. So anyway, that's kind of where things stand right now. I am enjoying blood air, but having it's causing me some like existential 
Alona Andrews angst whilst I am enjoying it. So, okay, anyway, I'm gonna make myself some dinner that hopefully I get to keep down. I'll pick something safe and neutral so that I can for sure keep it down. So I'm gonna do that and then, yeah, we'll see if I can finish up Blood Air tonight. And that will prime me to record the first podcast for season two of Changeling Cast. So that's exciting. Okay, let's make, let's feed the kitties because they're being annoying and make myself some dinner. So we have had an eventful, you know, 12 hours since last we talked here in the Like Woe household. So first of all, I did finish Blood Air, fully marked it up. And I think my thoughts stand pretty much where they were when we last talked, which is, yes, I enjoyed this. I love Alona Andrews. I love what they do. I do have some problems with this in terms of Julie slash Aurelia not having a distinct enough character relative to the Andrews verse. And there's a couple of things in here that I'm like, if she's supposed to be as competent as she is supposed to be, like this doesn't, the math doesn't add up. But did I have a good time? Of course I did. Did I love where it left off? Of course I did. Can I wait to read the next one? No. And I'm very much afraid that we're gonna be in the same situation as we are with Iron Covenant. Was that what that one was called? Where I was super invested in where the first book left off and then we're just sort of like hanging. So, come on guys, I need you to, need you to continue because I can't just be out here lingering. But I think I'd give this like, three and a half stars. I think from a different author, this would be like four stars, but for Alone Andrews, I don't think this is one of the best, but still very entertaining. Can't wait to keep going. Okay, then I went to bed and in the middle of the night, Hastings knocked over a lamp and scared all of us to death and thoroughly woke me up. So luckily since today is Sunday, I could sleep in, but we're having a slower start to the day, but I did finish Nettle and Bone because this is what won the poll and when I tell you that I loved this book, this book is fire. I was expecting to enjoy it, but I loved it so much. It's, I'm trying, it's kind of a genre bender. So I would say it's definitely fantasy. It is dark fantasy-ish, but not really. It has some, some grim stuff happening in this, but I would say the overall tone remains somewhat light. I don't know that I've ever read a book quite like this before. I mean, we literally have a dog made out of bones. We have a lot of thematic stuff around domestic violence. And yet I, I found myself laughing out loud to this pretty frequently. There's a side romance that I was very into and actually two really. Four people traveling together, two are old ladies who I think are falling in love. And then we have a younger guy and gal who I think are falling in love. Anyway, I loved this. I would say dark fairy tale might be kind of the tone, maybe. The setup is our, our main character is Mara, we love it. And she is the third daughter in a very poor kingdom. And she is off at a convent being held in case one of her older sisters is not able to produce an heir for the prince from a much more powerful kingdom to whom they have wed. He is like very obsessed with bloodlines. So he wants to make sure that his son inherits both his throne and their kingdom's throne. She comes to realize that he murdered her first sister and then he married her second sister and has been abusing her for like 15 years. And she's constantly getting pregnant and losing the baby and it's just bad. And so she is willing to do whatever it takes to free her sister from that situation. And I love this. 
so much. So much more than I was expecting to. And because I loved it so much, this throws a wrench into our plans because when you read a book, at least in my experience, when I read a book that has a very distinctive flavor to it, I can't just pivot into a new book on the same day very easily. So Legends and Lattes is 100% out because it's another fantasy book. I'm not going to be able to vibe with this. I might could vibe with a totally different tone book, but I think I'm either going to read The Island or some sort of sci-fi romance as a palette cleanse because I, this is just so evocative or I guess maybe distinctive in its writing style and tone that I need something very different to be able to continue to read. So mm, might get to this, but I'll be doing good if I can get into a sci-fi romance. So this kind of threw off my plans because it ended up being so good and so distinctive. Not sure how much more reading I'll be able to do today, but we'll try. First, I'm gonna have some lunch and I'm going to do some chores. I'm gonna try to like do a little reset here and then we will try to get going with either the island or a to be determined sci-fi romance. to go to bed but I did finish the aliens prize by I want to say Zoe King um, yeah you know we got some abduction sci-fi romance our human Kate is a prize in a gladiator style fight but she is the mate of this ruler of this alien race and he wins her and She's gonna be his mate and things ensue from there. Pretty standard fare, but I felt like competently executed for what it was. Yeah, three stars, it was fine. Excuse me. I'm tired, so I'm gonna go to bed. But we did read four books this weekend. So I guess I'll talk to you guys tomorrow when I can think mo more coherently about summing up the experience. But I'm feeling very, I don't know, I feel accomplished. Felt like I got a lot of chores done today. And, you know, I successfully rested, I think, in advance of the coming week. So that was good. Like, a success. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it is the next day. I'm trying to not get my tripod out, but that means I'm like hunched over. Okay, so it ended up being, I guess, like a 30 six hour readathon that I did and I finished four books and I had a three star, a three and a half, a four, four and a half, which I think is, I've been doing that a lot lately, having just like one of each. Okay, so three star was the sci-fi romance I finished last night. Ooh, the Aliens Prize, I want to say was the name of that book by Zoe Draven. It was free. It was fine. It was a palate cleanse. It's what I needed. Blood Air by Alona Andrews was good, it was entertaining. I love this world, I love these characters, so I enjoyed this. You will be getting full thoughts in a podcast at some point when I uh, go back through all these tabs and start talking about it, so. Not as good as I had hoped, but it was still entertaining, it was still good. The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics was just like, just very charming and lovely and has opened up, I think, a new avenue of historical romance that I'm going to seek out, which is sapphic historical romance because I feel like it undercuts a lot of the BS that I sometimes have problems with in a historical romance. So that was good. And then the absolute winner was Nettle and Bone. And I would say this was a surprise. Obviously I was hoping I was gonna like this, but I loved this, loved it. So good. Only quibble, uh, clearly white, right? Reads as a white person, 
Character is very clearly described as having brown skin. That is a point off. But I just, I haven't read a lot of books that have this tone and I loved it. And I just, a lovely surprise of how much I ended up enjoying this. So yeah, four books, 36 hours. And I feel like this was very invigorating to my reading. I feel like I'm coming off of this weekend with a lot of reading energy, which is a good feeling. I think I've been struggling to kind of get, I don't know if it's like in the groove, but just, I think I've just been so tired and stressed from work and life that having like looking forward to reading has been a little bit of a struggle. And I feel like this may have helped me kind of start looking forward to reading again in a way that it, I haven't in a couple of months. So yeah, I think this was a good little impromptu project I set for myself. Definitely let me know what you thought of any of the books that I read or considered reading. <laughs> let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.